Well, hey, everybody. How are you guys doing this Monday? I am so glad you've joined me. Thanks for hanging out with me here at the Off the Bench podcast. Today is Monday, which means I'm going to answer your questions, and there are lots of them. I'm going to get to as many as I can today in rapid fire order. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Well, I hope that wherever you are today, you really are feeling encouraged because the Lord is doing something. All right. So I know that the the headlines are coming fast and furious, and sometimes it just feels like we can't keep up with all the things that are going on around us. You've heard me say it before, and I'm going to keep saying it. The world might be in crisis, but God's people don't need to be. Uh, to that end, I hope you guys will join me at faiththatspeaks.com. That is my women's Bible study. It's open to women of all ages. Uh, These are beautifully written and actually, frankly, beautifully laid out and illustrated Bible studies that we put out once a month for you. For the months of May and April, I have been going through the book of Genesis. So Genesis chapter 1 to 11. And I'm telling you what, you guys, as I write these studies, the Lord is just refreshing my heart and reminding me why he counted Noah as righteous among the nations I've been reminded again why it's so important that I pass down my love for the Lord to my children so that they can pass it to their children. We're going to do a study in Psalm 78 this month as part of our Genesis 1 to 11 study. We're going to talk about uh, why I believe there's just one race, according to the Bible, the human race. So we'll talk about that. We'll deal with the topic of racism. We're going to talk about uh, what it means to stay inside the boundary of God and to experience the blessing of God. And so, If this is something that you would like to do with me, then sign up at faiththatspeaks.com. And I know you guys are going to be blessed. I want to encourage you to think about what it would look like if your faith found its voice. If your faith found its voice, what would God have you say? If your faith found its feet, where would God have you go? What would God have you do? Because you're not here for no reason. You are here for such a time as this. And God didn't make a mistake in putting you here in 2023. He did not make a mistake in giving you the children that you have or putting you in the area that you're in. Uh, I keep hearing from people who are saying, I'm going to I'm going to run. I'm going to run from this, you know, really crazy blue state. And then they move from a blue state to a red state only to find that there are sinners in the red state, too. And a lot of them are uh, conservatives. (laughs) So can I just encourage you right now, wherever God has you, let your faith be a faith that speaks. Uh, we're just here for a little while. You know, we're not here for, for a very long time. And the older I get, and I was talking to a friend of mine uh, about this the other day, and it, we were talking about some m- mutual friends that we have. Um, in fact, I have three really very good friends, people I love very much, who suffered strokes in the month of February. Uh, one of them is really, really having a hard time. Another one of them, um, I mean, it's a stroke, right? So these are all very serious things that happen, but to see the varying degrees of suffering and and see again how just completely fragile we are as human beings. We know that our lives can change in a moment, in the blink of an eye, a car accident, a, a diagnosis of a terminal illness or a stroke or something happens to a loved one. Our lives can change very, very quickly. And I'm telling you, I got off the phone with my friend and I called my husband and I I just was thank you was all I could kind of blurt out to him. And he was like, well, you're welcome. What are we talking about? I'm just like, just thank you for being a godly man. Thank you for loving our family. Thank you for walking with the Lord. I just want to say it to you in case I don't get another opportunity. And I know you guys, some of you are like, wow, that's dramatic. You know what? Take the time today, you guys. Talk to the people that you love and make sure that they know that you love them. Our lives, according to the Bible, are just a vapor. We, we really are just dust in the wind at the end of the day. And when you live your life knowing that eternity is ahead of you, it really does take the fear out of what happens to me if, you know, in this life, what happens to me here? Because we know that this isn't the end, right? We know that there's a life to come. Uh, Jesus said that where he goes, he's building a whole lot of mansions. My grandma used to tell me, you know, my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you might be also. And that's what we're living for. We don't live for this city. We don't live for this country. We don't live for this world. We live for a city to come, the Bible says, whose author and builder 
is God. And when you live for what's to come, uh, I don't know about you, but I want to store up treasure in heaven. And so that's my encouragement for you today on this fine Monday, where, whatever's happening in the news. Uh, I want you guys to be encouraged. I also want you to come out and say hello to me. I just got back from speaking in Minnesota, but I will be headed this weekend to Pigeon Forge to the Teach Them Diligently conference. This is one of my favorite conferences. You guys are going to love it. I hope you'll come on out. I'm speaking quite a few times uh, this weekend, and I will be at my table. I'm interacting with you, and all of my merch will be there. So we've got some brand new, really fun merchandise that helps you have your faith speak. And uh, the the new sweatshirts, the new T-shirts, uh, the new necklaces are all out. So I hope you guys will come out for that. After that, uh, I'll be headed over to Williamstown, Kentucky, to speak for my friend Ken Ham for the homeschool experience that happens at the Ark Encounter. Listen, you guys, stop giving your money to Disneyland, all right? Put your money into places that are honoring God and furthering the gospel. And uh, these are the conferences that I take part in. I hope you guys will join me. So I'll be very, very busy for the next couple of weekends. And I hope you'll come on out first to Pigeon Forge in Tennessee and then uh, with Ken Ham and company at the Ark Encounter for the entire week. So Monday through Friday, I will be there. And I hope you guys will join me for that. All right, I'm going to jump into your comments and your questions. If you'd like to reach out to me, the way to do that is to go to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. I really do want to hear from you. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the show, there's a special way to do that. And you can hear how to reach me uh, by just sticking around for happy hour at the end of the show today. And uh, I'll tell you exactly how to get a hold of me in that uh, from that avenue. So uh, if you're not subscribed to the show, you can head on over to Spotify, click on the subscribe button. And for just $6.99 a month, you'll get extended podcasts, um, uh, free gifts. Almost all of my uh, guests that come on the show that have either written a book or have a product out, they offer free things, freebies to the podcast subscribers. And I hope you guys will join me. So it's a great way for you to support the Heidi St. John podcast and also get extended material. All right. Lisa in New York has pulled her kids out of school and is wanting a little bit of encouragement. She said, hey, Heidi. Hey, Lisa. I've been listening to you for a few months now, and you've encouraged me to pull my children out of public school. First of all, Lisa, I'm going to stop right there. I I love to hear this. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for heeding the warning about the public school system and taking your kids out of school. Uh, you will never be sorry that you did it. She said it's been on her heart for a few years now, but her husband was against it, so she let it go. And in the last few months, she said she'd been feeling God calling her to do it, so she spent time in prayer that God would change her husband's heart she worked up the courage to talk to him about it, and he agreed. Uh, listen, Lisa and everybody else, that's the ticket, right? I, I get letters and questions and emails all the time from mostly women who really want to see God move on the hearts of their husband and change his heart for homeschooling. And you you know what, you guys, God can do it. God can do it. So keep praying. Uh, so she said, what advice do you have for a mom who's totally new to homeschooling? My oldest is a 16-year-old boy who has always struggled in school. He absolutely hates everything to do with school, including reading. His only interest is making and recording music, and he wants to be done with school. Do you have any suggestions to get him excited about learning, or should I just look into getting him a GED? All right, so first of all, you've got a 16-year-old boy. And remember, you guys may have heard me say before, but we're not raising children, we're raising adults. So we want to give our kids adult uh, responsibilities as they get a little bit older. Treat them as if we expect them to be responsible. Start talking to your son about what he might do when he graduates from high school. But I never, I never encourage people, if we can help it, to get a GED. The homeschool diploma that he's going to get from you without the so-called accreditation of, um, of an accrediting uh, agency or a body that would uh, give you some sort of an accreditation to me, it's meaningless because the schools are looking for students who are going to be responsible, students who are going to be uh, excited about learning. It's very possible that your son is not going to go on to uh, onto a four-year liberal arts college. And frankly, I hope that he doesn't because they're ruining our kids. They're finishing what the public schools are starting and cementing it at these uh, uh, government institutions. Uh, I would be encouraging him, as we have done with our sons, to just try to figure out what is it that he likes to do? What would he be interested in doing when he's finished with high school? And you know what? You can do the work that um, that the schools have not been doing. 
So you need a, a basic math program. You need find out what the um, what the graduation requirements are for your state and then meet those requirements. Get in touch with your local state organization. I know Leah is there in New York because I've spoken for them. I love those guys. So reach out to your state organization. Find out about the, the homeschool uh, cooperatives and homeschool programs that are in your area. Stay away from publicly funded homeschool programs. And I put homeschool in air quotes because once you take the money from the government, the government does not see you as a homeschooler anymore. They see you as a part of an alternative education program provided by the state. And so I just encourage you, uh, if he likes to record music and make music, encourage him to do that. Can he make a living doing that? Uh, Is it possible for him to, would it be possible for him to support himself doing that? Start having these conversations to encourage him to be a man. Uh, We need to have these conversations with our kids. She had another, uh, went on to say that her other two children are eight and six, and she's excited and nervous, feeling overwhelmed at the paperwork required in your state. Holla, it's New York. Uh, I want to encourage you to, if you haven't done it already, become a member at the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. That's hslda.org. In full disclosure, I sit on the board of that organization, and I would not sit on the board if I did not believe in it, support it, and encourage people to become a member at HSLDA. So check it out. Uh, the Homeschool Legal Defense Association, probably the the premier homeschool, uh, I think, organization anywhere in the world. And uh, it's a great, you can find out about the laws of New York or any state that you live in simply by going to HSLDA. All right. Another question came in from an anonymous listener in Florida. She said, should I allow my homeschool child to participate in a class and or extracurricular activity at the public high school? Well, I think that depends on who uh, your child is. What is your child's personality? Are they a leader? Are they a follower? Do you know the kids at this public high school? The Bible is very clear that bad company corrupts good character. And so the, the, the goal really of any Christian parent should be to get our children all the way through to adulthood with as little regret as possible and with a living, breathing, walking relationship with the Lord Jesus. In other words, we want our kids to know who they are in Christ. And so if your child is struggling with his identity, I would be hesitating. Uh, is there Are the things that he wants to do at the local public high school available in a private setting? That would be the first question I would ask. Uh, outside of that, you know, um, I, don't, I, I'm, I wouldn't encourage you to live in fear. I would just say be wise. We are called to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, to walk this life out in a way that pleases the Lord. And so take it to the Lord in prayer. Uh, These are not sin issues. They are discernment issues. And we need to be very, very wise right now. And it's amazing to me. And you guys have, I'm sure, heard me say this before. But just because something claims that it's a Christian uh, organization or someone claims to have Christian beliefs doesn't necessarily make them a follower of Jesus Christ. Woke Christianity is all over, like cancer in the church right now. And so uh, keep your child close to you. Listen to him. Uh, encourage him, exhort him, as the Bible says, with good teaching. And as opportunities come up, your job as the parent is to really investigate, is this going to be a good influence on my kid or is it going to be a negative influence? All right, another anonymous listener in Colorado and Christine in Texas had very similar questions. I'm going to read them both to you. She says, my husband and I have three beautiful kids. I'm 37, he's 41. This is the anonymous listener, by the way. And I go back and forth, but I think I'd love one more. But my husband is an absolute no. We completely disagree. Of course, a healthy marriage is more important, so I don't want to cause issues for us. But all of his reasons, in my opinion, are not good ones. Financial, space in our home, etc. Is it biblical to stop having kids for those reasons? And how do I let it go uh, other than constantly praying for peace? And then Christine in Texas had a similar question. She said, I feel called to have more children. My husband says no. It's breaking my heart and his reasons for not having them sound selfish to me. How do I honor God and my husband? Well, the first thing that you do when you want to honor God and you have a disagreement with your spouse, whether it's over finances or over having any more children or whatever it is, and you guys already know this, is to take it to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I opened the show today with a comment from a listener who said she'd been praying that her husband's heart would be softened and changed regarding the homeschooling of your children. And the Lord answered that prayer. What you don't want to do is allow it to uh, build resentment and bitterness up in you toward your husband. That does not honor God. 
And ultimately, the enemy will use it to drive a wedge between you and your husband. Uh, Anything that Satan can do to come between a husband and wife, including um, having us disagree about things as precious and as personal as whether or not we're going to have more children, he will absolutely do that. I would ask the Lord to soften your husband's heart or change your heart so that the two of you can be on the same page. Your husband needs to know that you respect and you honor him. This is a biblical uh, principle. We see this all throughout scripture that wives are called to love and honor and submit to and respect their husbands. And in a good marriage, you know, my granddad used to say this to me, in a good marriage, the issue of submission never comes up because your heart is for each other. And in the nearly 35 years that I have been married to my husband, uh, we have worked our way through many disagreements that we have had. And Jay's heart has always been for me. And so he would not make a decision that he knew was was going to be devastating to me without really hearing me through. And in fact, I cannot think of a single time when he has made a decision that was in direct opposition to me, knowing that it would hurt me. Um, and at the end of the day, and this is important, women, God gives men the responsibility. I know some of you don't like this, but it's, I'm sorry, take it up with the Lord. Uh, There has to be a leader in the home. And God says that men are responsible for the direction of their family. And so your husband will be answering to the Lord one day for how he directed your family. And you will be answering to the Lord one day for how you responded to the leadership of your husband. Again, I'm not wading into the waters of abuse right now. We're talking about healthy relationships. Everybody has disagreements inside their relationships even over things as precious and personal as whether or not to have more children. And so if you're asking me uh, if, if it's biblical to stop having kids for those reasons, listen, the Bible says children are a blessing, that we should be thankful when we have children. But I do not read anywhere in scripture that it is a command to have uh, as many children as your body can crank out. I don't see that anywhere. And I know some of my uh, friends will disagree with me on that, but I've studied this issue and I don't see that in scripture. And so I think it's a personal issue between you and the Lord and your husband. And you you want more than anything to be on the same page for the health of your marriage and for the health of your family. An anonymous listener in Kentucky wrote in to say, I want to stay home and homeschool uh, for many years, but my husband and I just switched roles and I got a full-time job with the ministry. I struggled this year with feeling that the kids were not doing enough school, trying to plan next year. And my husband said he doesn't like to talk Uh, more than 15 minutes or he starts to lose his voice. Do you recommend curriculum where he doesn't have to read much? I have all ages currently and some don't read well themselves. There are lots of opportunities for you. Uh, I got this question, sort of a similar question at a homeschool conference that I spoke at recently. And there was a mom next to me that said that her her, um, daughter was an auditory learner. And so they got as many books as they could on tape uh, to listen to at home, some of them down and you know, obviously on tape, I've just dated myself, but MP3s and downloads from the internet. Uh, you might want to consider things like teaching textbooks. I know um, Matthew C. has a video component to it. Um, my my wonderful dear friend, Andrew Pudowa, the Institute for Excellence in Writing also has a video component to it. Lots and lots of homeschool curriculum now comes with audio and visual components And if it was me, I'd be looking for that so I could help in that way. There was a YouTube comment recently that was posted about my episode on the NEA with my friend, Rebecca Friedrichs. And Rose, thanks for listening on YouTube, Rose. She said, hey, thank you, lady. Ladies, the Lord bless you. I needed this. I worked for the school district 12 years ago and I left 10 years ago. Back then I asked, what is going on? And things were changing so quickly. I taught history and our history books kept getting thinner and thinner. I cannot even imagine what the schools are like now. Seeing it frightens me and I pray for the kids in our schools. Thank you, you have a prayer warrior behind you. Thank you, uh, Rose, for that. We appreciate it. Another comment came in from Tanya also on YouTube. And she said she works in the public school system and as she has seen in one of her local high schools, the alphabet mafia's required novels that uh, students must read throughout the year, answering essay questions and writing reports. It's so sad how distracted and brainwashed these kids can make, uh, these books rather can make kids. For many, it's fight or flight where they'll fight for homosexual behaviors or turn violently against it so that they run to reckless sex. 
The silent truth is that having the LGBT required reading material in our school is encouraging our kids to think about who they want to have sex with. Yeah, you write. Uh, this stuff is everywhere, and uh, it's not going to stop until parents stand up in mass against it. Another YouTube came in from Lar2911, and she said, this is absolutely about identity. I live in a neighboring county to this. I'm shocked and saddened. They want to take our rights away from us and hold us as incapable of caring for our children. Uh, so, yep, absolutely right on that. Keep standing up for truth. An anonymous listener in Michigan said, Heidi, I would like to pull our kids out of the Christian school and homeschool them, but my husband wants to keep them in their current school. Boy, you guys, listen, I'm getting a lot of questions of um, angst between husbands and wives. So can we just take a moment and ask the Lord to uh, pour a salve of grace over our marriages? Your marriage is the primary relationship in the home. And the adversary knows if he can take out your marriage, he has a clean shot at your children. Think about that. The next time you allow him to drive a wedge between you for whatever reason, for finances, in parenting, whatever it is, sex inside of marriage, uh, I'm going to come back hopefully in the next several episodes. And we're going to talk a little bit about the importance of the sexual relationship inside of marriage, because I'll tell you with the widespread prevalence of pornography in the culture right now. Look what the enemy is doing. And I'm not scolding you, Anonymous in Michigan. I'm just saying uh, I feel just this this sudden um, need to just issue a bit of an exhortation to say, you guys, keep your eye on the ball. Um, it, it makes me sad that we are having to convince or it feels like we're having to convince our husbands more or less when it comes to the education of our kids. But pray for him. Pray for him, you guys. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Anyway, she goes on to say she feels like her kids are suffering. Um, the current Christian school is taking anyone and everyone whose parents want them out of public school and her kids in this Christian school, the class size is now doubled. She says, uh, I feel like if you don't have the resources, don't take more kids. He doesn't agree with homeschooling. And so I suggested sending them to a smaller Christian school and he will not agree. I need advice on how to proceed. Listen, I can agree with you certainly I went to a Christian school, graduated from a Christian school. There were a lot of kids in that school whose parents had trouble with them in the local public schools. And so they saw the Christian school as sort of a reform school, right? And so they would send their kids there and they would again co-opt the parenting of this troubled child to the school. That definitely had a negative effect on a lot of the kids that were otherwise doing good. We know bad company corrupts good character. Pray for your husband in this, in this arena. Love him, support him. Pray for him. Continue to have those conversations. Don't let the adversary drive a wedge between you. Uh, an Apple podcast review came in from Dylan Breslin. Thanks, Dylan, for posting that. Uh, she, she, was she said, Heidi says that you'll be encouraged when, she, when you listen to her podcast. You won't be encouraged to frolic carefree with butterflies, but you will be encouraged, like I have, to speak at local school board meetings, email and call your representatives, post and speak out on social media and build new friendships with other Patriot parents. Thank you, Heidi, for reminding us to stand firm in our faith and seek the Lord's purpose during these unprecedented times. Blessings and love from Lauren in Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you, Lauren, for sending that in. It's just such a joy for me to read your letters on the air and to hear what God is doing in your life. And I just want to encourage you, you guys, uh, follow the Lord in wherever he is leading right now. Because this is an incredible time to be a child of the living God. God wants to work in your life to help you get off the bench and onto the battlefield. Uh, the future of your children depends on it. And the Lord of Heaven's army said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I hope you guys will join me at my women's Bible study at faiththatspeaks.com. Uh, we're working our way through Genesis 1 to 11, and it's going to be a fantastic study. So now's a great time to sign up for it, faiththatspeaks.com. And I hope that I'm going to see a whole bunch of you in uh, in Pigeon Forge this weekend and next week at the Ark Encounter in Williamstown, Kentucky. If you're subscribed to the show, we're going to take a brief pause and we'll be right back for more extended version of the Heidi St. John podcast. If you guys have not subscribed to the Heidi St. John podcast, I want to encourage you to do it. Uh, we try to do about 10 to 15 minutes every day over there if we can, giving you some extra tidbits. Today, I'm going to jump in and just give you a little bit of a preview of a talk that I'm going to be giving this weekend 
in Pigeon Forge called Real Life Homeschooling. I hope it encourages you. You can subscribe today by going to Spotify, click on that subscribe button, and then you'll also have access to uh, episodes where we are going to give you little uh, coupon codes and freebies from my guests that come on, uh, opportunities to reach out to me via a special email address that's just for podcast subscribers. And we hope that you'll join us. Also, it's going to get rid of the ads here at Spotify, which I know a lot of you are really eager to do. So you can find out how to do that by just hopping on over to Spotify and clicking on the subscribe button. Listen, we love you guys. You can reach out to me by going to HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. Send me your questions. I love to hear them. Uh, Dr. Mark's going to come on the show with me in just a couple of days. So if you've got uh, questions for my friend, Dr. Mark, uh, you can also submit them to me at HeidiStJohn.com forward slash Mailbox Monday. Have a really great day, everybody. We love you guys so much. Stay in there and I'll see you right back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture.